Good evening. Thanks for joining us on this election night. We've got quite a few things to hit on and a few surprises. On what was supposed to be a great night for Colorado Republicans, we are witnessing an epic collapse of that party in this state, with Democrats recording blowout wins all over the place. Democratic Governor Jared Polis had his race called within about 20 minutes of polls closing. At this point, he leads Republican challenger Heidi Ganahl by nearly 20 points. Democratic Senator Michael Bennett heads back to Washington on behalf of Colorado. Another blowout win, currently a 14-point margin against Republican Joe O'Day. And in Colorado's 3rd Congressional District, the potential upset that no one was talking about, Democrat Adam Frisch currently leads incumbent Republican Lauren Boebert by four points. That race is certainly far from decided, but that is a shocker of an early result in the 3rd Congressional District, which we need to remember has only been Boebert's district for two years, but was redistricted to become more conservative, more yeah. Republican. Remember what an upset it was when she beat Scott Tipton? Yep. And then she became such a big voice on a big national stage. She became a Republican star like Colorado has not seen probably since Tom Tancredo had his national flash yeah. in the pan as an anti-immigration voice. But Lauren Boebert has achieved a level of Republican stardom in America that far eclipses that in this particular age. And while it's no guarantee, Marshall Zellinger, that she's going to lose tonight, mm -hmm. she's got a hell of a race on her hands. When the district was redrawn, it went, I think, plus seven more Republican. Yeah. And this was an area where, if, you know, people were interviewed. It's like, uh, yeah, we love her. So what's going on? And, and it's Mesa County. The population centers, Mesa County and Pueblo County. And I, I, let's walk over what I like to do, walk over to the map. This is not going to be necessarily the best television because this map from the Secretary of State's office can refresh in real time. But we're looking at Mesa County red, which means uh, Lauren Boebert has 50% plus one support here. Pueblo County blue, that's the population centers. And of course, I left my notes over there, ah. but, but it's based on what I want to show. And I think it refreshed, so it's not going to be there. So we're going to stay on the map. Basically. Uh, in Mesa County, I believe it was about 110,000 total voters in Mesa County. Thank you, Kim, for bringing this to me. I appreciate that. In Mesa County, 106,000 total voters, 48,000 unaffiliated, 40,000 Republican and 15,000 Democrats. And in this county alone, Lauren Boebert is leading by 6,000, 25,000 more Republican voters than Democrats, and she's leading by just 6,000 votes in that county. I'm gonna move this over and then bring up Pueblo because I wanna talk about their stats. And I wish I could make this bigger, but I just don't trust this website. Pueblo has 110,000 total voters, 37,000 are Democrats, 26,000 are Republicans, and Adam Frisch has the advantage here by uh, I'd say 5,500, 5,600. So he is definitely outperforming Pueblo County where Lauren Boebert needs more support and he's just not his deficit in Mesa County where Grand Junction is is just not as drastic as Boebert needs it to be for her to lead and you can see the other counties there's just not a lot of population in terms of the, the we have tens of thousands of votes in Pueblo and Mesa County and when you look at the district which was drawn differently than two years ago because of redistricting it went more red but so far in these results, it's going more blue. Doesn't mean it's going to hold that way, but in the population centers, we've seen the results come in and, and Boebert's going to need for every 10 votes that come in, she's going to need like six or seven to make up the difference. It's, it's really stunning what we're seeing happen tonight, because when you consider the election environment that we're in, you've got a Democrat in the White House, which favors Republicans during a midterm. You've got high inflation. You've got concerns about crime. You've got concerns about immigration. This is a time of turmoil. And Colorado voters have said, thank you, but we'll stick with the team that we have. Right. Right. And, and even though that is that is definitely against what we're seeing across the country in it, many, many places, it is not what we so. would what we would have expected. Uh, our Alex Lewis is at the Democratic Victory Party tonight. 
where the victories have been plentiful. In this race, and I, I want to congratulate Lang. Hi, Kyle. Uh, about an hour ago, we heard from Governor Polis, who made his victory speech here on stage amongst a couple of hundred very enthusiastic voters and constituents. And, you know, during that speech, he really touted everything he considered to be a win during his first administration. He talked about uh, Colorado having the ninth lowest rate of COVID deaths during the pandemic of every uh, state in the country. He talked about all-day kindergarten giving parents other options and flexibility to make more money while educating uh, our, our kids here. He also talked about having the largest property tax cut in the state of Colorado's history. And he talked a lot about uh, our best days are ahead of us as Coloradans, as a state. And when I asked him specifically, you know, how, how can you say that, especially in the light of inflation, with the state becoming so expensive to live in, this is what his response was. Whether you voted for me or not, I will work as hard as I possibly can on behalf of you and your family, and I'll never stop fighting for a better future for the state that I love. And you can always rest assured that I will always do what's right for Colorado. He talked a lot about affordable housing and making Colorado a place that people who live here want to stay, can afford to live and thrive. Uh, and also ran into him in the hall, Kyle, you'll be interested to hear. I asked him, does he have his eyes set on the White House? Just kind of smirked and said, as far as right now, his eyes are only on this great state. And if anybody believes that, <laughs> if anybody, if anybody believes that, but you know what, this is the kind of thing where if somebody builds a profile for themselves, right. then these questions are going to come about Absolutely. other races. I mean, goodness Lord, I, I remember years ago when even when uh, Cory Gardner was just getting into the Senate, people were saying, oh man, he could, he could run for president someday. Absolutely. Because he captured something at that moment that people connected with. And clearly, uh, Governor Jared Pol Bialik, what Governor Polis uh, has done is He's earned the trust of Coloradans. You, you, you see it in those election results. Doesn't mean he doesn't have detractors. Doesn't mean there aren't things he hasn't done wrong or things he's been misleading about. We've talked about those things here. But this is an overwhelming vote of approval for a governor in a state that tends to reelect its governors. Right. And, and he did get, you know, I think the pandemic in many ways, the way he handled it and how he used his opportunities to be on a national stage during the pandemic, um, he used it quite effectively. And that's part of the reason why I think many of us think that he's looking to do something beyond this at this point. His campaign, I thought, was interesting, too. And when you look at some of those last debates, he was he was chill. It, for lack of a better description. I mean, he seemed like, let's go in, let's have this debate, I, I'm okay. I think, I think he was a little feisty. I, I mean, I but mean, I mean, he didn't seem like his normal uptight self sometimes. Well, I, I think what it is, and we, we straight up asked him about this when he did an extended interview here, was have you come to enjoy debates? And That's he said, it. he said, that I have. It. And Which honestly, was not his I think what it is now for him is that he feels like he has a record to run on. His critics don't like his record, but he now feels like he has a record to run on rather than promises to run on. It's a lot easier to run on a record than promises. And I also think if, if you're a Colorado Republican or conservative looking at what's going on tonight, we thought, you know, at least going into tonight, which should be a really good night for Republicans, you're going to get kind of like a test run of two different philosophies. You've got kind of a Trumpy candidate appealing to the far right mm -hmm. base and gubernatorial candidate Heidi Ganahl. And then you've got a guy rejecting Trump and running toward the middle in Joe O'Day. And it was going to be a real test on which one of those approaches would work in Colorado. And the answer is neither. Both of them got smoked like brisket. Which is interesting because many people felt like Joe O'Day was a very good candidate. Uh, he was definitely a very different kind of candidate than the, the Trump-like candidates that had been run. But what we're seeing from Colorado voters tonight, for the moment, is they're not interested in either. And that presents a real challenge for the Republican Party. Mark Salinger is out at Heidi Ganahl's, uh, well, it's not a victory party, it's just a party, I suppose, out in Sedalia, where uh, tearfully Ganahl took to the podium and cast some, some blame for her loss and promised to keep fighting. Yeah, Kyle, it was billed as a victory party. It obviously is not a victory party anymore, even though the music is still extremely loud here. Heidi Ganahl is still behind me right now, thanking supporters, giving people hugs, 
their kids dancing on the stage. She just got off the stage moments ago after thanking supporters in a tearful concession speech. She said, quote, I'm sorry that we couldn't pull this off tonight. Now, this was a full on concession speech as she's down double digit points as the votes continue to be tallied. Her running mate, Danny Moore, who is the lieutenant governor candidate, who was the lieutenant governor candidate. I spoke with him right after the uh, the speech, after he came off, and he's someone who had previously questioned the 2020 election. And he told me tonight that he accepts the results tonight and that he has always had faith in the Colorado election system. Now, Grinnell, for her part, we haven't had the opportunity to speak with her, though we'll try. Grinnell thanked her supporters and told them that she's not going anywhere. You all had a voice. Don't let tonight silence you. We're not going to give up the fight. Make sure those in power know decisions made in Denver boardrooms should really be made at the kitchen table by the people of Colorado. The tough choices parents must make to make ends meet are what our elected leaders should be guided by, not what unelected bureaucrats say is best. Ganahl also wished her opponent, Governor Polis, luck and told him, speaking to him directly, said, Please do not forget the voters who voted for me in your next term as governor. Now, important to note that Heidi Ganahl held her own election night watch party here in Sedalia, apart from the uh, the bigger GOP watch party. She was scheduled to speak there, but Kyle, we're told that she never made it there. <laughs> Yeah, she kind of broke away from the Republican Party down the home stretch. They were very focused on inflation and crime messages, and she started veering into conspiracy theories about, you know, big tech censorship and uh, kids identifying as cats and stuff like that. And a lot of Republicans were just like, you know, in, inside inside the party, a lot of Republicans were just like, not not interested. That's not how we're going to win. And that is, in fact, not how they not how they won. Let's look at what two she said on races. the stage, though, tonight was yeah. very much consistent with what she has started with be a governor yep. for all of Colorado. It's yep. much what Joe O'Day said. Who's on script. Yeah, who's exactly. On, it, much like Trump. It's very there's, different than what she said in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, there's on script and off script. Right. And she was, on, she was on script tonight. Quick look at two congressional races. This is the uh, seventh district. This used to be Ed Perlmutter's district. Democrat retired. They redrew the district. Republicans had high hopes that they were going to win. And they're getting, they're, they're getting walloped. It's, it's a 20 point edge for uh, Democrat Brittany Pedersen. I think that that's something people are relatively surprised by. That, by that, that margin, margin. That margin is by wild. that margin. Yeah. I mean, Ed Perlmutter was intensely popular. Had been there for such a long time. Known for his grocery store meetups with everyone, and um, really had kind of set the tone for that district. But then once it got redrawn. This was the best hope for Colorado Republicans tonight, and they still very well may pull out this race. This is the new 8th Congressional District, the Denver suburbs in Adams County up to southwestern Weld County into Greeley. This is a 40-41% Latino district, a district that was leaning Republican down the home stretch. And Republican Barbara Kirkmeyer narrowly trails Democratic State Representative Dr. Yadira Caraveo, 49-47%, to 47 with an outsized presence by a third-party candidate, 4% uh, for the Libertarian candidate Richard Ward. That would be the second best performance by a third party candidate in a major race in Colorado since 1950 if that number holds. We'll be watching that race and we'll look at other statewide results when we return.